What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Canada, and I shoot entirely with Fujifilm. So I've shot pretty much all of my professional work on Fujifilm. In fact, I think there's only been one shoot I've ever done that I got paid for that was not on Fujifilm. I've used a whole bunch of different cameras from them. Right now, I'm currently using the Fujifilm X-H2S, which is their flagship model. And I have a lot of thoughts about where Fujifilm's at right now, where I'd like to see them go, and what I think this Fujifilm X Summit could mean. Now the elephant in the room is, are they going to announce the X100 successor? The X100R, they're calling it. I've heard a whole bunch of people, including Reggie Ballesteros, who everybody knows if they know Fujifilm, say something along the lines of like, the spec I'm interested in is the factory they're gonna use to produce these things so we don't end up in the same situation we did before. Because the second that camera caught on, it just went, fucking nuts, right? And you couldn't get one. People were selling them for crazy amounts. It was all super janky and weird. Rather than talk about what we know is happening, I wanna talk about my sort of Fujifilm dream summit, what I would love to see, what I think would be very cool to see over the next few years come out of the Fujifilm lineup. All right, let's be real though. It doesn't matter what we think. Yeah, sure, we're the consumers, but we have no idea what goes into them deciding on what they're gonna do and how they make their money. It would be ridiculous for me to think that I know what's going on. It's, it's the armchair quarterback or whatever you wanna call it, right? Like, I don't know what they should do because I don't know what it takes to run a successful billion dollar business like they have, right? All I can say is as a creator who right now exclusively uses Fujifilm and, and has for a while, Here's what I would love to see. So I don't really think there's any interest in focusing on the entry level cameras. And frankly, I think they've done too much of that in the past with like the X-A1, the X-T100, X-T200, that whole lineup of cameras that just felt like they were in this weird liminal space. But then there was this really interesting lineup, which was the X-T10, 20, 30, and the 30 Mark II. And I think an X-T40 will probably happen. I don't know if that's the right move for them or not, but I do know that having that small travel-friendly camera is a very cool thing. Some people could say like, well, that's, you know, that is the X-100. But if you wanna be able to change your lens, if you wanna be able to get certain things that you just can't get out of an X-100 camera, I think that could be really cool. And then other people would say something like, yeah, but what about that XE4 lineup? You know, well, first of all, the XE4 was trash ergonomics. You had to put so much stuff on it to make it feel comfortable, thumb grip and a handle, just to make it something that you would wanna use. I brought the XE4 with me on a trip to Italy and I had a few different lenses with me and the only one that felt comfortable to actually walk around with was the 35 millimeter F2 because it just felt so uncomfortable holding anything else. Yeah, it looked cool as shit, but I just don't think it was a great camera. So if they do move forward with an XE5, I would really like to see them put back that little dial switch so you could change your focus and just make the overall ergonomics better because it was a great camera. I loved having that style of shooting, but just such a pain in the ass to use. So I think like the XT40, the XE5, that kind of space is gonna be interesting. But I think realistically, what we need to see is the X-Pro4. And the reason I say that is because there were a few things really cool about the X-Pro3 and a few things really frustrating about it. And I think with everything we have now, the 40 megapixel sensor, the way better autofocus, I think if they get rid of that weird flippy screen they had where it like showed you what film sim you were using, I don't know anyone who actually found that all that valuable. I think there's some things they can do to that camera to kind of bring it up and to make it that sort of flagship photography camera. Okay, so I do wanna see that walk around camera, whether it's the X-T40, whether it's the X-Pro4, whether it is the X-E5, whatever it is, I do wanna see that happen. And I think if it is something like an X-Pro4, then we're actually gonna see a camera that you could use on serious shoots as well, and that would be great. Regardless, it has to have a bigger battery life. It has to be weather sealed. It has to have a couple of those little things that we all really need. So the next thing I'd like to see from them, and this is sort of pie in the sky. This is not Fujifilm Summit 2024, but I think it's time for them to release really like a video centric camera. That's not a hybrid trying to play both sides. I love the Fuji X-H2S, but it's not quite what I want. It doesn't have things like, you know, like vector scopes. It doesn't have waveforms or false color. Um, the ergonomics of it are not as good as it could be um, when it comes to shooting certain things on video, but I think if they were to create a dedicated, kind of like a box cinema camera, that would be so good. The thing is, I think there's two things that they'd need to do with a box camera. Firstly, they'd have to decide if they're gonna dive into IBIS with that or not. I think their IBIS is still very photocentric. I think when you go to use it for video, you just, you notice it so much, it's so distracting sometimes. 
not all the time and it depends on how dynamic the shots are and and how compelling the story is you're telling too because people don't notice that shit otherwise so if they could create a box style camera and they could support it with some really good lenses i mean they have amazing zoom cine lenses if they could create some more budget friendly options on that style i think we would see fujifilm absolutely crush in that kind of budget filmmaker where it's way higher budget than maybe you and i have to do like little running gun stuff but it's the budget that people are spending to get like a komodo or something like that and i think fujifilm can do that all right so the next thing i'd like to talk about is lenses i think there's a few key lenses that need some updates that i'd really like to see that is the entire f2 lineup i think that you know the 16 mil f2.8 the 23 f2 the 35 f2 and the 50 mil f2 are incredible lenses my only frustration with them is if you do want to use them for anything other than photo, the way that they're focusing racks and steps is just really jittery. I was using it on a shoot and it was so bad at one point that I had to switch to manual focus for everything. And it was really hard because I was operating two cameras. So I had to somehow manual focus while checking on another camera. And it was just a nightmare. I have also noticed like variations copy to copy. I've owned three different copies of the 35 millimeter. And each one of them, I've noticed little differences in terms of how the autofocus seems to work. One of them was smoother, one of them was more jittery, one was kind of in the middle. I don't know, it's just, it's annoying. I, I feel like those lenses need an update. They need to take some of what they've learned over this past little while, making that 18 mil f1.4 and the 33 and the 23, and bring that into what they're doing with the f2s because they're smaller, they're light, they're, they're awesome lenses. I just think, because Fujifilm is pushing themselves into this hybrid territory so heavily with some of their cameras, but still keeping the form factor so small, I think they really need to think about how they can just find a way to bridge that gap between that photocentric lens that so many people do want to put on. And the major problem is that for all those lenses, they essentially have the f1.4, more expensive version that absolutely crushes when it comes to that comparatively. Okay, the next lens I'd like to see a refresh, and I don't know if anyone's thinking about this, is the 18 to 135. That lens could be so cool. If they could make that an f4 constant, it would be a badass lens. It'd be bigger, it'd be heavier, it'd be more expensive, but it would pair so perfectly with X-H2 and the X-H2S. And that lens at an F4, I mean, F2.8 would be cool, but that would be monstrous and super expensive and heavy and I couldn't afford it. But at an F4, you would have so much opportunity with your video production with that lens. And I think if you were doing sports, if you were doing like wildlife, like there's lots of reasons and use cases for it. Even like landscape would be awesome. But that lens has so much potential if they were to basically rethink it. If they were to say, okay, we're gonna go fixed aperture, we're gonna put in our new focusing system. You know, that was not a very sharp lens. So they would have to kind of update a lot of the optics. It's essentially a square one. Like they have to go all the way back and start that lens over. But I do think if they made that lens, that would be awesome because I don't know, they're just, there feels like there's something missing in their zoom lineup. And I don't know why that feels that way because they do cover a lot of ranges, but you know, I'm on the 17 to 70 Tamron right now. And I chose that over the 16 to 55. I mean, I owned the 16 to 55 and I owned the 16 to 80 F4. The F4 was something that I was not super happy about sometimes, but I didn't really care about that too much. F4 still worked for most of what I did. The issue was that that lens, I found like it was kind of all over the place with its focus a lot of the time. And it, it had a real hard time staying on focus with people especially. And I also just, it, it wasn't the sharpest lens in the world, which doesn't matter for video so much, but for photo, some people like that. The 16 to 55 is awesome. I mean, yes, it's heavy. Yes, it is very expensive, but it's great. My problem with that lens is I felt like I wanted more on that long end. I felt like I wanted it to push a little further. So having something like this, that's essentially like a 24 to 105 F4 constant, which is the full frame equivalent of the lens I'm using now is super helpful. And it made me stray into a third party lens, which I've done over and over. The major reason I think we need the 18 to 135 lens is because that 18 to 120 power zoom they put out, I, that lens, like I, man. Okay, the, the other zoom lens I'd like to see is the 70 to 200 constant. I think that would be very, very cool. That would bring us to like around a 105 to 300 constant aperture lens would be really, really vital for me for some of the sports work I do. They have the 50 to 140 2.8, which is a great lens. So it might seem like it would be sort of redundant to make a 70 to 200, but I think you could market that in a different way. And I think you could get a lot out of a lens like that. Okay, and on the topic of all these cool hardware updates, 
I think moving forward, every single body they create needs to have some amount of internal storage. 256 gigabytes, 128, 64, something. I'd actually be pissed off if it was 64. But I think there should be some kind of internal storage in any camera you're buying that's over $1,000. I mean, the question of how long could you rewrite onto that over and over and over? Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. I don't know the specifics of that. I don't see any reason why we couldn't have that moving forward in any camera. Why should we not have some kind of internal storage? If you had internal storage, you wouldn't need to put in a second memory card. It would solve the problem entirely. You just need that processing of that memory to be fast enough to keep up. But I don't know, charge us a little more. Like everything's so fucking expensive now anyway, so just charge us a little more and put in the things we actually need. So that's hardware, but what about firmware? What would I like to see change? The major things I'd like to see change in firmware, there's a few that I think are very video centric. Like we need waveforms, we need vector scopes, we need false color. I don't see why their flagship camera that they're touting as this like sports and video monster doesn't have it, doesn't make any sense. The other thing I think would be really cool is if Fujifilm put some money behind developing more LUTs. So Fujifilm did something incredibly cool by creating these film sims, right? They created these things that made us feel like we had control over our camera to create looks that we wanted in the JPEG. What I think would be really cool is if Fujifilm spent some time developing LUTs. If they said, okay, we've got all these super great Fujifilm cameras that we're using for video, why don't we develop some LUTs that support them and give us that film-like feel for our video in the same way that we've done for the film simulations. They have the most access to their sensor and how it works and color rendition. So if they were to start developing LUTs that you could you know, you could pay for, you could pay $100 to get a few LUTs that you could put on to have your video footage match what you're doing with your film simulations. We would see so much cool stuff come out of that. A few more things I'd like to see on the firmware side. I don't understand what is going on with clarity. So there's this setting you can use for JPEGs where you can adjust the clarity. Basically, you can bring it down, you can bring it up, and that changes the effect of the image on the JPEG. And it's great. It actually can result in some really cool things. The problem is when you take that photo, the way it processes the JPEG afterwards, it makes it take a really long time. So you take a photo and it takes like a second or two for it to process. Don't understand why. I've never heard a convincing reason as to why that can't be changed or fixed. I've never even really seen Fujifilm address it. So it would be really nice to see if they could just figure that out. I'd also like to see them do something to be able to fine tune contrast a little more. So I think there's two ways they could do this. They could just put a contrast slider like you have in Lightroom or more interestingly, what if they were to start to develop the idea of putting those tone curves that you get in Lightroom or in Capture One or whatever you use, if you were to able to adjust those in camera so you could fine tune where you want your shadows to dip and where you want them to come up and all that kind of stuff. Don't see why something that couldn't be possible over time if they were to develop it properly. Why couldn't you adjust the calibration of the colors? Why couldn't you adjust your tone curves? All the things that you can do in your exposure settings. It, it doesn't make sense to me that we can't get there. Okay, so that's my rant. That's the things I'd like to see at the Fujifilm Summit uh, in 2024. I know it's not gonna happen. February 20th is very close approaching and we definitely won't see that, but I'd be curious to see if any of these things do come to fruition eventually. Thank you so much, appreciate you watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, what you think is gonna happen at the Fujifilm X Summit, what you'd like to see, your dream list, if you have answers to anything I've said, if you know why clarity takes 20 minutes for me to take a photo, tell me it all in the comments. I appreciate you so much, thank you for watching. Subscribe, notify, blah, 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 blah. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna get out of here, peace.